Welcome back to sector one, the first stop you should make for your motorsport fix. So before we get into this week's video, I wanted to take a minute to pay tribute to Jason Dupasquier. We sadly lost him at the weekend after a really unfortunate crash and from all of us here at sector one, we are sending our condolences to his friends, his family, his fans and his team. Jason was only 19 and such a young promising rider taken far too soon. He will be missed greatly. So this week we were at Mugello for round 6 of the MotoGP Championship. Many hold Mugello in the same regards as to what F1 fans hold Monaco. It's such a historic track. People and riders, it, it's their favourite track. People love going to Mugello. It is one of the most favourite tracks on the calendar and you can see why. The Tuscan hills, the flowing of the track, it's just the most picturesque track there is on the MotoGP calendar and you can see why everyone looks forward to going to it every year. So last year, unfortunately, due to COVID-19, we weren't actually able to go to Mugello and for many riders and fans, obviously, this was very upsetting. But this year, in 2021, we were back. Unfortunately, we still couldn't have any fans there down on trackside. But for many of the riders, this meant that even though they were at their favourite track, they were able to take things more calm and it was a much more relaxed atmosphere this weekend. So in this week's last lap with Lauren, like I said, we are in Mugello and we're going to start off with qualifying. Fabio Quattararo managed to take pole on Saturday, which was definitely not in the script. It is Ducati's home circuit and everyone thought that Ducati was just going to clean up all around them. We really thought that they were going to be dominant this weekend, but unfortunately that was not the case. The Yamaha proved to be the bike. In second was Peko Bagnaia, who all weekend had been strong. He even set the fastest lap on Saturday free practice three and that was before Fabio went out and broke the record again. Finishing the front row was Johan Zarco, a fellow Frenchman, on the Pramac Ducati. So at this point we feel like Ducati is very strong. In fourth was Alicia Spagaro on the Aprilia. In fifth was the other Ducati of Jack Miller. Six and seven was both KTM riders Brad Binder and Miguel Oliveira. Suzuki in next with both Alex Rins and Johan Mir, and in 10th was Frankie Morbidelli on the Petronas Yamaha. Some riders were not as fortunate, with Marc Marquez and Paul Espagro both on the Repsol Honda bikes in 11th and 12th. Maverick Vinales also had a bad qualifying alongside Valentino Rossi. So it's Sunday, and all bikes are now on the grid ready to go. And in the warm up lap, something crazy happens. So we're just going round and getting into our grid positions ready for the race to start when Enea Bastianini somehow manages to flip his bike and go over his handlebars to hit Johan Zarco before they make it to the grid. I have, I have no words to describe what anyone was thinking at this moment. How did he manage to do that? Many think it's down to this new starting device that a lot of bikes have now and you need to set the brakes, you need to put the brakes on to, to start the starting device basically and many think that that's what he was trying to do but how he didn't see Johan Zarco in front of him and how he managed to front flip over his bike is beyond me. His race finished before it had even begun. Thankfully for Johan Zarco there was no bad damage to his bike. You can see that there was definitely something somewhat broken. <laughs> his lunchbox. <laughs> The race was already exciting before it began, but it got even more exciting as the lights went out. Fabio Quattarao managed to hold off Pecco Bagnaia at the start of the race, but Pecco soon took the lead showing his dominance on the Ducati, but disaster struck for Pecco. He was only one point behind Fabio Quattarao in the championship and he fell off out of first place. So the race was now over for Pecco Bagnaia, meaning that Fabio had clear track ahead of him. So he took full advantage of it. Unfortunately though, Zarco put up a big fight and you could see that the Pramac Ducati was so much faster in the long straights. So it took a while for Fabio to get into a rhythm and eventually he did manage to pull away. Zarco then was battling in second place with the Portuguese Miguel Oliveira on the KTM. It was a bit strange to see KTM up here considering they've had so many problems this year so far, but it was actually nice to see 
the likes of Miguel Oliveira and Brad Bender up at the front fighting. Zarco and Oliveira fought for second and third place for majority of the race. Further down the order was Jack Miller who was being hunted down by both Suzuki bikes. Alex Rins and Johan Mir looked very very strong and they were chopping and changing places to try and get ahead of Jack Miller. Eventually Alex Rins made the move and he actually made it stick. He was fighting hard, he was moving up and Johan Mir didn't wait long to go behind him. Now in front of Jack, the target in front was both Zarco and Oliveira. Rins was pushing hard and this forced an error from him meaning that for the fourth week in a row, he fell off. It was mentioned in last week's last lap with Lauren that something really needs to be done down at the Suzuki garage. But from Johan Mir's performance, you can see that he really put his head down this weekend. And initially, you could see that Alex Rins has also done a lot of work. But why is he continuing to fall off? Why can he not put in a consistent race? These are the questions that are going to need to be answered. The next crash of the race came from none other than Marc Marquez, another crash for the eight time world champion. Marc himself said that it was his fault and he was trying to fight to gain positions. During his crash he almost took out Petronas Yamaha's Frankie Morbidelli and for the second week in a row Frankie Morbidelli had to dodge a Repsol Honda to try and stay on track. This put Frankie all the way to the back of the grid then having to fight up the places to even try and get some points, which unfortunately didn't work out for him. At this point in the race, Fabio Quattararo was ahead by about two seconds, but Johan Zarco looked strong behind. Oliveira looked even stronger and Johan Mir again looked stronger. Zarco started slipping back the order. You could tell that something wasn't just quite right. His tyres definitely had to be gone. Miguel Oliveira took full advantage of this and passed Zarco with ease. Next up was Johan Mir. He fought to close the gap and it worked for him and he also passed Johan Zarco. In the end no one was able to catch up to Fabio. He was able to keep a comfortable lead the whole way through the race. He finished in first place with Miguel Oliveira taking second and Johan Mir finishing the podium. But after the race there was some confusion. This was because there was a track limits warning given to Miguel Oliveira meaning that he had to be demoted one place. So the podium then stood at Fabio Quattararo, Johan Mir and Miguel Oliveira. But within five minutes of the race finishing, they changed it back because they determined that Johan Mir had also exceeded track limits. Now in my mind, that means that they both should have been demoted a place and that Johan Zarco should have had a place on the podium. But rules are rules, I suppose. So the top 10 this week were Fabio Cattararo, Miguel Oliveira and Johan Mir making up the podium. In 4th was Johan Zarco and in 5th was Brad Bender. In 6th we seen Jack Miller and in 7th was Alicia Spigaro. In 8th somehow Maverick Vinales was all the way back there. Ninth was Danilo Petrucci and in 10th we finally saw Valentino Rossi put in a strong performance on the Petronas Yamaha after struggling all year long. It was nice to see the doctor return to some sort of form. So now it's time to pick out my top three riders of the weekend. Now coming in at first it has to be Fabio Quattararo. He had a very very strong weekend from start to finish. On Saturday he was even able to put in the fastest ever lap recorded at this track. He now holds the lap record. He also showed dominance on Sunday's race to prove that after arm pump surgery he is back on form and he wants to be back on top. He now leads the championship by 24 points with Johan Zarco trailing behind him. Peko Bagnaia then slips down the championship orders to third. My second rider this week that I think put in a good performance was Alish Espargaro. Now I've been wanting to put him in here for quite a while but unfortunately last week he had some technical issues with the bike meaning that he had to retire from the race. This week he looked strong. He qualified in fourth and fought hard during the race. He finished in 7th and was able to bag a lot of well earned points, which stands well for him in the championship order. In my mind it's only a matter of time before we see Alicia Spagaro up on the podium or even winning races. His work with Aprilia this year has shown that he is ready and he wants to be up there fighting with the top dogs. My third rider for this week is none other than Miguel Oliveira. He showed a real return to form this weekend and looked strong throughout. KTM themselves also look to have made a big step up so hopefully we will see Miguel higher up in the order in the races to come. 
So that's it for this week's Last Lap with Lauren. It's hard to put into words how we all feel after the weekend's events. And as much as you want to say that it was such an enjoyable weekend, you can't help but remember the dark cloud that shadowed over the weekend. It was tough for not only the viewers, but the riders as well. And to be honest, I, I can't even imagine how the riders were able to put that to the back of their mind and go out and race. You could see that many riders were visibly upset and even Fabio Quattrao dedicated his win to Jason Dupasquier. It was a very, very sad weekend for anyone who is a motorsport fan. And again, from all of us here at Sector One, we wanted to pass on our deepest condolences to Jason's family, friends, team and fans. I'll be back for another Last Lap with Lauren next week after round seven at Catalonia. And if you want to see more content from Sector One, make sure to follow us on all social media platforms at Sector One Podcast. See you next week.